as so many of Michael's books are, about how things get valued. In the case of The Blind Side, how a left tackle became an undervalued asset that suddenly became a highly valued one. Uh, is, is that what you saw in, in, in your son, uh, Michael Orr, uh, an undervalued asset? Well, I think that's obviously the end result. And, and I'm Sean. I know Michael Lewis expects you to call him Mr. Lewis, but down here we're, we're, we're first name based. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Um, now, you know, I, I don't, you know, truth is until Michael Lewis showed up, we didn't see Michael Orr as anything but, a, but another addition to our family. Um, it seemed to get real interesting to everyone else. Um, but, but in retrospect, obviously, that's the message of the book. And Michael Lewis did it very, very well in that if the most obvious success story walking down the streets of Memphis can fall through the cracks, imagine who gets left behind. And, and, and I think that's what resonated probably in the movie uh, because it was so uh, compacted, you can catch the, that point so quickly, where the book had a lot more you know, data and, and, and interest to it. But when it's done in such a short period, you can see that, wow, you know, society, we really miss out on kids. And, and obviously, Michael was valued as worthless, and, and, and obviously that's, that's so inaccurate. I mean, this kid was smart and, and intelligent and obviously athletic gifted. M Michael Lewis, you know, you seem to have a great gut for writing and picking bestsellers, but uh, did you have any idea that Blindside would blow up so big as a movie and all that when you were doing it? It sold so poorly as a book. I, <laughs> I, had, I had no hopes for it after that. I mean, I thought I'd blown it. Sean, Sean I grew up with Sean Toohey. Oh. Uh, he used to routinely take me into his backyard and make me play basketball till he had scored 100 points on me. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, and and I did, it really. You, this is such an accidental story to have gotten told because the only reason it happened was I was in Memphis anyway on other business writing something about our high school baseball coach, and I thought I should get back in touch with Sean, who I hadn't seen since high school. Uh, to to uh, ask him about the coach and Michael wow. was sitting in the living room and it, it was very early in their relationship and I just started to follow it without ever really thinking it was going to be uh, 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 anything and it, it so the the way it kind of mushroomed is spectacular. I hate to ask it's such a wonderful story. I hate to ask such a blunt financial question, but considering the book didn't sell well. What are the financials on the movie? Do you, have you gotten any upside out of how well it's done? Or was <laughs> Sean, it a you wanna, sale? Sean, you want to address this question? <laughs> yeah. Every morning, my wife wakes me up by throwing the newspaper at me every time the numbers come out and say, who negotiated this deal for us? And I go, <laughs> yeah, it was I, me. I go Michael Lewis. Did. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so no, we, so you, you're not leveraged to the, the box office sales in any way? No, Sean, no. And I, Sean and I have a percentage of the net profits, and there's never been a Hollywood movie in history that has no, profits. No. No. So, 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 darn it. Darn right. it. Sean, do you think, though, that, that between the movie and the book, that more people will be more aware that, that fewer kids will fall through the cracks or not? Well, I think that's a great question. And, and if, if the movie and the book did anything, I, I think it moved people in some direction. And, and that's the, the, you know, idle is, is the worst possible movement. If you get people mm -hmm. moving, good things happen. And, you know, what, 35, 40 million people are going to see this movie, right. so you can't tell me something good's not going to come of it. But I think... And, and I firmly believe that you're a different person walking out of the movie than you are walking in. Mm. And partly is because the people sitting there, and it's the same thing with the book too, it, it, but you sit there and you look up at the screen and you go, well, well that's me. You, you know, so I think it resonated with me. We're in a great country. You, you know, yep. we're in the worst economic times that Michael Lewis makes sure that he tells us about on 60 <laughs> Minutes and all this kind of good stuff. But, but our giving is up. And um, in fact, my wife and I are writing a book about the power of giving and, and, and how it really does move our country. That's when you'll cash in. Good for you. Great. We're going to have you back for that. for that. Thank you so much, Mr. Tui. Michael, before we let you go, can I ask? We're getting emails from viewers who want to know why, when it comes to the big short, there's no Kindle edition. Um, it, it, why sell something for eight bucks when you can sell it for twenty-four? Bingo! Uh, ah. but, because but, it you know, cost you only a dime to make instead of costing you twenty of the twenty-four dollars. Yeah, no, I, 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 this is not a decision the author actually gets involved in. <laughs> but but I think the principle of Kindle is like the principle of the paperback. They're pricing down the demand curve like that, and the, and all these all these publishers are doing the same thing. You know, Michael, there will be a Kindle edition. You I, have to wait a few months. Uh, you know, we've we've obviously given you a lot of praise for your books, but. I think the highest praise for your work actually just came from your friend Sean, 
who said you're a different person after watching the movie and reading the book than you were before you started. Sean, did you say that? Yeah, he just did. <laughs> on our air. I can't believe you hadn't told him about the no-hitter you threw in high school yet. That's usually how you open up all of Oh, yeah, interviews. that's exactly what I do. Yeah, yeah no, he, Sean will tell you that he, I sat in the back of the class with him in, all through school, and we were the two dumbest kids in the class, too. He well, he's a little shocked that I'm actually writing books for a living. Well, I, I, I know I made the top half of the class possible, and I know you weren't far from me. Yeah, no. that's right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, you guys, need so your, great. you guys need your own show. Yeah. yeah. Michael Lewis, author of The Big Short, Inside the Doomsday Machine, is on sale today, along with Sean Tui. Wow, that was fantastic. I